Okay, it's road trip time. One of the oldest and longest standing breweries in the United States happens to be right in our own backyard. Of course, we are talking about Shell's Brewery. That's right. This is wild, you guys. The history of brewing at Shell's dates back to a time before electricity. I, what, uh, how did people even survive back then? How'd they so, know about your brewery if you didn't have Instagram? I, <laughs> so true. <laughs> by by telegraph. <laughs> uh, reporter Kristen Hobrick takes us underground to the caves under the brewery in New Ulm. There's so much history here at your brewery, but today we're going to talk about and learn about the history that lies below. The Correct. Brewery. Yeah, they're kind of a, a special part of the brewery that not many people get to see, mm -hmm. uh, and a, a cool part of our history that, again, not many breweries have. So. Okay, so back in the day, before electricity, before yep. artificial refrigeration, yep. how did you guys yeah, harvest yeah, ice? Yeah, yeah, here we are, no, no refrigeration. Uh, August Shell really kind of picked out a great spot here uh, mm -hmm. at the brewery. Uh, we're right by the river here, and so we would take those, those teams of horses, the same ones that would bring the wagons around, uh, and they'd go down to the river, and they would uh, essentially take these huge uh, saws down there. Massive saws. Massive saws, yep, and the team would go down there, and they would cut these huge blocks of ice out of the river, uh, and they would drag them up to the ice house here. You have the picture here where you cut these blocks of ice out of the river. It makes me think of maybe your daughter's favorite movie, Two Frozen, Frozen yeah, yeah, where young Kristoff yeah, is in there. Absolutely, we're down there doing it, yeah, and so yeah, we're down there, uh, and they would bring it up into the ice house, and they would pack that ice house full of sawdust. Without harvesting the ice and having those blocks, what would that do to the brewing process? You're kind of at the whim then. If the weather is super hot, then you're not either not brewing beer or you're brewing ales. And either way, it's not a great time for a brewer. So here you have a, a picture here uh, of them installing the first artificial refrigeration cooling tower. Uh, very non-OSHA approved sort of, uh, uh, <laughs> scaffolding here. Uh, but that's the way we did it back then. And so, but yeah, that really kind of changed the game for us here. Suddenly now you weren't. You weren't at the whim of the weather. Sure. You could brew consistently year round. And so then what happened with the caves at that point? At that, that point in the caves, um, we were kind of doing our own malting on site as well. So we were using part of the caves then for a furnace room. Um, and then they were just kind of using them. They kind of just shuttered them. Uh, and then they just kind of sat dormant for, for many, many years. Now we are in the uh, the original kind of tap room or the, the hospitality room here at the brewery. So this was built in 1860 uh, with the, the house above us and then the lagering cellars and, and everything to the side. But this would have been the... Like the gathering socializing yep, yep. area? And so this is where you could come and have one or 17 shells beers. Uh, <laughs> there was always one beer on tap. And that so was that the would, tap. That would have been the tap. Obviously okay. with stainless steel now, we, they kind of redid it. But okay. the president's office is directly above us. And okay. so the floor was pretty thin. Um, and so when people would maybe stay too long, it would get a little too loud. Uh, and then the president could actually just walk into the hallway upstairs, he'd turn the beer off, and that was kind of your hint to, if the beer stops going, that's, that's your time to go, and then they would all clear out. So go hint. back, oh, open the beer back up, and then it was just business as usual. Oh, right off the original tap room, yep. we come around this corner, and it's like, wow. Yeah, yeah, so this we, we come in here, yeah, and then this is kind of the very non-tour friendly part, but this is the, you know, a peek down inside the caves itself. So watch your head as you're coming in here. Well, I, I don't have to do that, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm vertically challenged, yeah. but how cool is yeah. this? So yeah, here down, this is kind of where the all that ice kind of came in here, and so you have the kind of the holes in the wall over here, where would have like a trap door or something like that to go straight in and out yep and then ice? they would they would move they would essentially bring those blocks of ice in and then you would line the entire uh tunnel here with with that ice and then pack it with sawdust and then the the wall that you see on the very far end would have been blown out and that would allow that cool air to move um, throughout the fermentation so uh, every year uh, around july or august we, we we buy a bunch of barrels and we brew a nice dark uh, dark lager and we will we'll hold them, house them in these barrels and age them. And it really picks up that nice kind of bourbon whiskey character. Oh. Uh, so it's a very limited run that we do every year. There's only so much space in these Highly caves. Highly sought yeah, after. Yeah, yeah, so there's only so much. <laughs> Let's try to say the name together. Cave, age, aged, barrel, aged, aged lager. lager. Yes, there it is. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a mouthful. But yeah, that's so yeah, once a year around the November time frame is when we release that to the public. Okay. And Kyle, it's so unique because there's really no other brewery around the right, state or yeah. even country that, that has a cave. Right, there's, there, you know, the breweries that have this kind of thing, there's only a few of them left that are in, still in production, and the, I don't think that I know of any of them that are actually still utilizing them for any kind of production sense. So, wow. again, kind of a, a unique part of that makes uh, shells really super unique and, and cool Minnesota history. So, yeah, yeah, a nice nod to history. Yeah. Well, thanks for having us down well, today. Well, thank you guys for coming, and thanks for spending the day with me. 
cool. I love that history. Kristen, thank you so much. So we'll get the name right because it's written right here, so we just have to read it. The Cave Aged Barrel Aged Lager is released just once a year. You, you nailed it. You nailed it. It's, it's so Shells anticipates that it'll be, it will be available to buy right around Christmas time. I will be looking for that as well. <laughs> uh, Shells also offers special tours where you can experience the caves firsthand at their Into the Depths tour. The tours are offered once a month. For more information, just head over to TwinCiesLive.com. Okay.